Welcome back to National 5 Biology, Unit 1, Cell Biology. Today we're going to be looking at the final key area, key area 6 of cell biology, which is respiration. It's quite a short key area, but there's a few things to, to know and quite a few questions that can arise from it. So to begin with, hopefully at some point you have came across this basic respiration equation, where you take in glucose from your food that you eat and you breathe in oxygen, and through a reaction, you produce energy, which you need for, to survive, and you have carbon dioxide and water, which are also produced, the carbon dioxide and water that you breathe out. What we're going to be looking at through this key area is going into more detail of this, and also what this energy is, how that energy is created, and also the fact that there is more than one type of respiration. So to begin with, we want to look at what energy is. So the high energy molecule produced during the process of respiration is called adenosine triphosphate. So tri meaning three, so adenosine and three phosphates. This is the substance that we all use for energy. Hopefully through this diagram, you can see that there is a adenosine molecule and three molecules of phosphate that are all joined together through these bonds. What happens though, is that there's a lot of energy that is stored within these bonds which hold ATP together, holding the adenosine and the three phosphate molecules all together. If the bond at the very end, at the terminal end of the phosphate chain is broken, then energy is released, and that is how energy is actually released for us to use. So if this molecule or this bond here breaks or is broken, then that phosphate is free from the molecule and energy is released. If that was to happen, we end up with a different molecule. This is called adenosine diphosphate, so di meaning two. Obviously, you can see from this diagram that that adenosine now has two phosphates joined to it, so ADP, and there is a free phosphate that is at the end that used to be joined on. What we end up with is this kind of cycle of ATP and ADP, where if adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is broken down into adenosine diphosphate and a phosphate, then energy is released. That bond is broken, energy is released. However, if you want to make that adenosine diphosphate and the free phosphate back into ATP, adenosine triphosphate, then that requires energy to restore that bond. So there's a lot of uh, words going on there that sound really similar. So just try and get this idea into your head that ATP broken into ADP releases energy. ADP into ATP requires energy to be put back together again. What we're now going to look at is how this ATP is produced in the first place. And there are two forms of respiration that we're going to look at and that you need to know the difference between. So first of all, there is aerobic respiration. Now, hopefully that rings a bell from key area one cell structure, where you found out that the mitochondria in the cell is the site of aerobic respiration. Now you're going to find out what that actually means. So aerobic respiration, that requires oxygen. Oxygen has to be present for aerobic respiration to take place. It takes place in the mitochondria, which you already know, and it's a very, very effective way of producing energy. It produces many molecules of ATP. This is the, if you want to think of it as the best form of respiration. The other form is anaerobic respiration, which can also be termed fermentation. That does not require oxygen, so it's the opposite from aerobic respiration. It takes place in the cytoplasm, so it takes place in a different area of the cell. And it only produces in total through the whole process two molecules of ATP. So it is not as effective as aerobic respiration. What we're going to look at is both forms of respiration, both aerobic respiration and anaerobic fermentation, they both have stage one. Of respiration which is called glycolysis. Glycolysis, if you actually break down the name of it, simply means glucose splitting. So we're looking at that glucose from our food that you've seen before in the basic equation and what happens to that. So in both forms of respiration we have stage one glycolysis and it always takes place in the cytoplasm. So this glucose that you get from your food 
it is broken down into a molecule called pyruvate. And the pyruvate is important because we want to use that if you have a stage 2. And also two molecules of ATP are produced through this process. So that's where we get the two molecules of ATP from in anaerobic respiration or fermentation because both forms of respiration have stage 1. So that two molecules of ATP is always produced from glucose being broken down into pyruvate. If we then look into stage 2, if we have oxygen available, we can go into aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration, it moves into the mitochondria. It only takes place in the mitochondria. That pyruvate, which has been produced in stage 1, is broken down into carbon dioxide and water. So that's what we spoke about before in the basic equation, that you breathe out CO2 and water. But 36 molecules of ATP are also produced. So a lot of energy, a lot of ATP is produced through breaking down that pyruvate into carbon dioxide and water. You gain a lot of energy. Remember, this takes place in the mitochondria, and for this stage, aerobic respiration to take place, oxygen must be present. So if we combine the 36 molecules of ATP from aerobic respiration stage 2 and also from stage 1 glycolysis, we end up with a total of 38 molecules of ATP. So a large amount of ATP has been produced this way. Luckily in the exam at the moment you no longer need to know the exact number. You need to remember that many molecules of ATP are produced. You get a lot of ATP from aerobic respiration. But if we have a look at stage 2, so anaerobic respiration or fermentation, this is if oxygen is not available and it produces less ATP than aerobic respiration. So in animal cells, if we do not have oxygen, we still have stage 1 in the cytoplasm of glucose being broken down in glycolysis to pyruvate and that two molecules of ATP are also produced. But stage 2 is very different if oxygen isn't available. We have fermentation where pyruvate is just broken down into a molecule called lactic acid. So you don't have that extra gain of ATP. You don't have the carbon dioxide and the water being produced. The pyruvate just breaks down into lactic acid. That lactic acid is what is formed in your muscles when you've exercised a lot, if you've worked out, you wake up the next morning and you're stiff, you're sore, that's the lactic acid. You've not been taking in enough oxygen, you've not been able to take enough oxygen for aerobic respiration, you've not been getting in enough energy, that pyruvate is broken down into lactic acid and you don't get anything else. The other thing to keep in your head is that this is all done in the cytoplasm. The mitochondria is not involved here because aerobic respiration has not taken place. So stage one is always in the cytoplasm, but stage two of fermentation is still in the cytoplasm. So in total, you only have that two molecules of ATP which were produced in stage one. In plants and yeast, stage one is the same and aerobic respiration is the same, but fermentation is slightly different. So lactic acid is not produced in plants and yeast cells. Instead, same process in glycolysis to pyruvate, but in stage 2, pyruvate is broken down into ethanol, which is an alcohol, and carbon dioxide. So this is something you may have came across beforehand. If you typically think of fermentation, if you think of uh, processes such as making beer, this is how alcohol is formed. This is the reason why People use yeast, for example, in the brewing of beer or if you're making wine. You force this fermentation process, you deprive it of oxygen, you produce alcohol. So again, same process as fermentation in animal cells, but instead of lactic acid, ethanol and carbon dioxide are formed and you still only have that net gain of two molecules of ATP. Well, that's all you need to know for respiration. So there's a lot of words being thrown at you, a lot of different numbers being thrown at you. So you need to go through these and make sure you know what happens in stage one, what happens in stage two aerobic respiration, what happens in stage two of anaerobic respiration or fermentation, and the differences between animal cells and plant and animal cells. The key thing to take away from this is aerobic respiration requires oxygen, it takes place in the mitochondria, it produces many molecules of ATP. 
anaerobic respiration or fermentation does not require oxygen and it's a less effective pathway. You only end up with that net gain of two molecules of ATP. So again, go through this and answer some questions that I'll put up and attach to the uh, notes section of this YouTube video. Thanks very much for listening to it. I know people have been asking for Unit 2 and Unit 3 to be uploaded. I'm working my way through those at the moment. I'm very happy that people have been finding these useful, and thanks again for listening. Good luck.